joining us now to discuss, or rather to address many of the problems within our educational system that all, all, all through the show we've been discussing education anyway. So uh, there are some problems facing our educational system and we're going to be discussing it. How the standard has fallen over the years, how our graduates are becoming fast unemployable, many parents are guardian, prefer to seek foreign education for their children and wards, and why government institutions are no longer attractive. Joining us for this conversation is Mr. Alex Onya, the founder of Educare, one of the top educational platforms in Africa. He will be discussing our curriculum, what is wrong with our curriculum, could we have a funding problem, or is it the infrastructural deficit? These and much more we will be discussing with him. Welcome to the show, Thank sir. Thank you so Thank much. We're excited Thank to you. have you. Alex Onya. Uh, they are Onya. Onya. <laughs> Alex Onya. <laughs> so Thank good. you. <laughs> see, there are many issues. You mm. see, the last guest just this. Uh, the, the, curriculum. the curriculum, it dists our educational system, say la cram, la. It's just, la we're just, cram. we're not really, um, and I think it was on Monday, we also on the show discussed the fact that a lot of uh, Nigerian graduates are unemployable. And then we have the fact that even ASO are threatening to go on strike right now, saying mm -hmm. the government hasn't fulfilled its obligations. The, so where are we even going to, where would you like to start from? Would you want to start from the primary school, secondary school or university to start addressing the problems that we have seen in this educational sector. Just before you start answering, let me invite our callers to join the conversation. You can call us on 0810-764-1679, or you can call us on 090-241-63440. Tweet to us, we'd love to get your information on X, or you can stream, join our streaming and comment on YouTube right away. So, where would you like to start to? Okay, firstly, I would like to say that you guys are doing an amazing job. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. So, um, when we talk about education for a country, I think the first focus is actually on basic education. Okay. And when you talk about basic education, you talk about the early years, mm. that is the primary, and then the uh, to end of junior secondary. Oh, okay. So now, if um, what's the purpose of education? Education basically is to be able to prepare the people for the society, to mm -hmm. prepare the people so that they can actually grow and then advance and do more critical things. Senior secondary starts from specialization and research. Mm. So when you want to fix education, you don't focus on senior secondary and the university, you start from focusing on the basic education because the truth of the matter is that any child that has quality basic education has already been prepared for the future. Right. And that's when you see the society start getting fixed. But it's a situation whereby you look at the horrible nature of the nursery schools, the primary schools, and there's zero attention to them, then you can already start detecting core decay in the system. Hmm. So, what do we need to do? Firstly, um, you can't actually fix something that you are not paying attention to. Hmm. So um, yeah. our education system needs a lot of attention and care. And you see the schools, I mean, before we talk about the advancements in terms of AI, we need to, I mean, the children need toilets. Hmm. The roofs are leaking. The yeah. environment, there are snakes. There are grasses hmm. that are not being cut. The teachers are poorly treated. So how do we attend to these people, right? These things are fundamental things that we must do. Then we talk about the curriculum. Currently, we use the role learning approach. So the role learning approach means, like we say, la cram, la poor, la forget. <laughs> so we, children, are, and you know, that's the reason why we have a lot of churches, but the society is still in decay. Mm. So the reason is that people's spirituality are being determined by how much they can quote scriptures. Mm -hmm. not by how much of what they learn transforms their lives. Mm. So you see, bright students are people who can cram a lot of things and pour a lot of things and forget a lot of things. But now, and any country that you see that practices rural learning at this age never makes any form of advancement. Mm. So look at people that advances. That's what they call critical thinking, problem solving. Mm. So whereby children are, I mean, for instance, if you've ever seen like... Um, an IG, IGCSE exam, mm. compared to a WAIEC exam. WAIEC will ask you, what are the synonyms of this? Mm. IG will never ask you that. Mm. IG assumes that this is something you should know. So they will ask you questions that will make you put that Apply. synonym into context. Into context. Mm. You understand? So these are the things that shape. So, and when they ask you questions, they want to ask you about, let's say, forest. They will just like, give you like a picture of a forest. Then the way they will ask you questions means that you must really understand how forests work for you to actually answer that question. And you see the assessments, no two persons have the same answer. 
All right, so now my question yeah. is, just from everything that you've said, how okay. can we then begin to make a very practical yet integrated switch into ensuring that the way the status quo that currently exists in the okay. educational sector, whether from primary levels, like you have said, how can we start to rehash or restructure our educational system such that we make that fine switch, seamless switch into systems, a different system of learning that ensures that students can think, can rationalize, can reason, employ creativity, all of these things that are very necessary in today's market to help them succeed. How can we start to incorporate some of these elements into already existing um, structures so that we can have a seamless blend? Or do you think we need to completely overhaul what we currently have on ground? I think before we take any step, we need to educate the people who are going to um, fund it or actually going to advance it. Okay. Because, you know, for instance, a father who, who was flogged mm. believed that a child should be flogged. Mm. So, and, but, uh, so what happens is that we need to educate the people in power. Mm. They need to now understand truly, truly that things have changed. If only when they now understand and believe it, that's when they can now advance things. Sure. If you want to attack things from the surface, you will probably never get any meaningful result. So for me, I think that's the foundational thing that we need to do. By the time that is done and they truly buy in, then a lot of things can follow suit. Okay, so like in a situation with what's going on now in the educational system, yeah. it's obvious that parents are preferring to send their kids to foreign schools. But then we also know that there's a problem in terms of mo um, monitoring, that the kids don't get that uh, monitoring and support from the parents when they need it because they are not really um, present. So how do you think that they can cope that by increasing our own um, level of educational system in order for parents to be present while during the formative years of their kids' life because they feel that they can't get this here and then they tend to go abroad. How can we bridge that gap? So the truth of the matter is that uh, Nigeria has a lot of amazing private schools, mm. a lot of them. So ideally, it's not recommended to send your child abroad probably so the best time to send your child abroad is probably during masters mm -hmm. you understand but i mean at the base level i mean during the university stage mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so at the early stage it's always good to stay with your child be with your child give your child your, your proper that is DNA. support yeah. this day student yeah. no i mean no, <laughs> the, truth, no, the, truth, no, the truth of the matter is that whether whether they whether body i mean yes. both of them are actually good yeah. so it just depends on the one you choose but the point is that the children actually not right because there's what they call societal shock. Mm. So when you go so early or at some point, you see that children are failing in, in, are in raped in the US and the UK, not because they are not brilliant, mm. but because they don't understand how things work. So they take like one year or two years so to, and then things are moving. Mm. So you see that and once you start failing, you already start failing. Mm. The school will just write to you, I think you're advised to withdraw. Yeah. So, but that's why most of the time you see them, they must go through like an IB program or uh, A-level. Mm. Those things helps them. That's why if you want to do A-level, they recommend you do it in the country that you want to school in. Mm. So yes, that's here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They are brought the one yeah. that you're against because you think the kids should be closer home. But if a child was in boarding school in Nigeria, it's still away from the parents. You don't think that's possible. No, what not really. Them, no? For Nigeria, it's not different. I mean, if you're in the battle, for instance, your parents can actually come anytime, any day, mm. and see you. But if you're in the UK, parents can't easily come as they used to come. To find money. Yeah. So, and you know, of course, advanced countries, their process are a little bit more rigid. Mm. Yeah. So that's for Just me. like what you were telling me this morning, that you don't follow the yeah. rules of the school, where to... you just jump, come in to see I'm your sure kids and talk. Go shop at any time. Nigeria, you can show up at any time. Yeah. And you, you are there are schools in Nigeria that mm. tell you, you, you know, more, even all, all the schools my kids have attended, mm. it's always there. You can't visit at certain hours. You see those hours, mm. that's where me I visit. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you say I can't visit a child that I put in your care at any time. Okay. My point is any time. Yeah. I feel the need to, I should be able to see. No, it's not right. The reason is very simple. It's if structure. every single parent visits at the time you visit, then the school has policies. So if you actually uh, go against it, then he also teaches the children it that it is good to always go against yeah. the school policy. I go to my IC. <laughs> but I tell you to my IC, I uncover the abuse of my son mm. by doing that. Yeah, but it's still mm. not right. Mm. You know, it's right too. According to her. Ah, well, yeah. let me bring you back to our educational sector because listening to you and on the, studying the policies that were implemented, at least we've been on this show, I've, I've been on this show for 11 years and I have discussed across different ministers that have been put in charge of education and the problem they see more often is infrastructural. So would you say that the government is... Um, allocating our budgetary allocation or how we are 
um, executing our budgetary allocation for educational sector is misplaced in dealing with the core problem that we have in the educational sector. See, mm. a child mm. can learn under the tree yeah. and get the best form of education. True. The, you can't keep going to X. I mean, unfortunately, most of the people put in position of ministers of education mm. are zero the qualified. The truth of the matter yeah. is that they are professors, but they are zero qualified. Mm. So the truth of the matter is that if the right person come in power, mm. you will see how things will change. You don't need to be in a beautiful AC furnished classroom to be an exceptional child. Mm. You get my point. These things are good. These are nice to have, but they are not the most critical things. Mm. So let's first of all understand that, like I talk about care. You need to know, I mean, the poorest child doesn't mean, you can see a child that didn't grow in that silver house, mm -hmm. but you see that child well behaved, Section. well cared for, not because the parents has everybody, parents pay their attention and they care. Mm -hmm. What children need the most is care. Mm -hmm. And once you give them that care and you can put some basic things in place and the place is safe, mm -hmm. you can see that the learning skyrockets. Okay, so my fear is, you know, for lack of um, facility, there can be no care. It's easier, it's, it's demotivating for both teachers and students. And the example Tokwa is trying to give is that here, nobody really sent. It's a sign itself that they don't care. That, you know, a child is put in a very difficult situation to learn. How can you leave a child in a, a attached roof or, you, you know, bad roof classroom? No chairs, no seats. No matter how the care you give the child. Is that encouraging for the child? How do you do that balance? I'd like you to... I think also, uh, so I'm trying to answer it. I think also we also need to understand as a country, why do we even need to educate our people? Mm. So um, a few months ago, I went to Eton College. I spent like six hours there. I needed to understand why. One of the first schools in the UK. Mm. And one of the things they told me that Eton was specially set up to educate British people. Mm. That they are a local school and they remain the local school, mm. right? That is their intention. And from it, a lot of thousands of other schools have sprung up, right? Mm. If we understand that education is actually a tool that we can use to transform our nation, that gives us a foundational base. So every other thing we fix in place mm. will take shape. Mm. I don't want to start talking about the... Because, I mean, when you talk about infrastructure, it's relative, mm. right? So if I, want to, I don't want to start talking about those things that we assume mm -hmm. are the infrastructures. Once currently, I mean, technology is very critical now mm -hmm. in learning. If the children can have a very safe environment, a very safe and neat environment that can protect them and, and quality teachers that can show them care and educate mm -hmm. them, these are all they need. And it may not cost us so much. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say Let me take this call. Okay. Um, Gladys has called all the way from New York. So Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you. Hello, good morning, Gladys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, thank you so much. I enjoy your program. So thank you. I, if I hope it was the opportunity to be stable all the time, but the little time I have joined into it, I only have a question for you. Very quick at this morning. He's talking about how can we transform the education system in the nation. And how can we have a suitable environment of learning? <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Well, our leaders are not ready to set up things in the infrastructure in the schools are not properly arranged. Well, I've got to our leaders. I, I understand you cannot discuss education without discussing about discussing about leadership yeah. and governance, but I, I think that we all want to do is not castigate on this show. We want to inform our leaders. If we say they don't know, then let them, by listening to this show, get yes, get me, information. You were going I to see, ask me a question. Yeah. So, yes, I was going to okay. ask about tech because you oh, yeah. ventured well, let into... Let me just answer briefly yes, on this. Ahead. So for me, the leaders are actually us. That's the flesh and blood. Mm. So <laughs> that somebody don't agree now doesn't mean the person will agree tomorrow. Mm. That's why we teach. You teach a child, you teach again, you teach again, you keep teaching point, till they will, stick. they will stick. So the point is that a leader may not understand now. A leader may not understand tomorrow, next tomorrow. Yeah. But maybe the first time they will understand. So mm -hmm. the point is that we that's the purpose of this kind of engagement. Mm. So that they can listen, they can understand the critical importance, and we keep emphasizing it. So the time they said, we have non button, and then we move. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how I see them, actually. Mm -hmm. That's a great perspective. All right, so talking about uh, care when it comes to education, the place yeah. of care, yeah. I wanted to venture into tech. Uh, how right. do you think that tech can be incorporated or utilized 
to speak to the heart of education, what education should be in this day and age. How do you think that we can leverage tech better uh, for all collaborative arms in the educational sector, whether it be teachers, students, parents, guardians? How do you think that we can have, that tech can help to provide a platform where we can synergize and you know, create a more robust uh, process such that we address care as it should be given in education and we can actually you know move things forward yes, in this sector um before you answer let me take austin austin has called from Suriliri. welcome to the show austin good morning good morning austin good morning ladies good morning. and uh, the gentleman there you're doing great thank you i've been listening to your guests i was wondering what about core values morality sometimes mm. when you give these children all the best education but moral depravity messes up everything like some schools, some that went to Dubai, and there was a video of a particular girl messing up. So what about morality? What about core values? How come our educational system inculcate this? Because if you spend the millions and then the behavior, the attitude is zero, I mean, it's going to be the outcome eventually will not be desirable. What do you think about that? Thanks. Okay, so, um, you know, we have different arms of education. So, but you know, majorly what we know here and we focus so much is on academic education. The secular part. We have spiritual education. Yeah. Mm. And this type of education are very critical. We have the moral education, like he was talking about. Can you imagine a first class graduate going to jail? Mm. You know, that's a slap. Mm. I've always said that the true, um, what they call it, the true proof of the education that you have is your character. Mm. So. Mm. If you have bad character, your education is worthless, mm. right? So the point is that, and remember, it's not one, it's the society that trains a child. Sure. And that's why if we get the foundation right, the society knows that this is not allowed here. Mm. Mm. This is not allowed here. Ideally, human beings are designed to be erroneous. That is why you have rules, you have policies, you have this. So that's why the government has to do their part, making sure that rules are being made, the consequences are followed, mm. and then we don't bypass any form of process. So I think in terms of building the morals and standards and organization, this is where the government plays this critical role. Because even the Bible tells that the, the government, the purpose of the government is to ensure that the right behaviors are being mm. maintained. Yeah, but mm. so she asked the question about tech, in te, um, technology, using technology yeah. to advance the educational sector. Okay. And I'd like to see, do we need it at this time in Nigeria? Yes, we, so um, fortunately, we work with more than 2,000 top private schools in Nigeria. Oh, okay. Mm. So yes, yeah, so um, we have access to almost all of them. So we understand how our technology have shaped their learning. Mm. So, I mean, there are so many ways that we can deploy technology. One is actually in teaching and learning. So let me give you an instance. The quality of who teaches you determines your output. Sure. So to have the best teachers in every school is impossible. Mm. So that is why you see somebody like in programming, we have like Moshe Medani. Moshe Medani has taught more than 10 million people. And he does that online. So with Moshamedani, you see that they have 10 million overqualified or exceptional software engineers. Mm. So you can actually invest. You can, you can see some people like you, Lesson, that did some amazing stuff, right? But aside from that, you can, if, let's say, um, Chika now now decides to record something on, let's say, uh, media marketing with your wealth of experience, and you see that one million uh, mass communication children uh, watch it, mm. trust me, they will have exact same quality. Mm. So, and the only way you can get it to those people with that time is through technology. Then in terms of, audience. exactly, in terms of assessment, mm. Mm. you know, there's one of the things we did that actually caused a lot of transformation in education. We stopped assessing based on, for instance, when we take our CBT assessment, mm. we are not coming to say, you got maths B, you got maths 40. We want to know, okay, maths has... Let's talk mm, about this assessment yeah. evaluation with yeah. um, tech when we come okay. back from this break. We take a quick okay. break. When we return, we continue with how to deal with the challenges of our educational sector and the key areas that will help us see improvement in our next generation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Um, we're still discussing the education educational sector, the necessary reforms, and much more. We have with us Mr. Alex Onya. I got that right, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've been doing private consultation during the break, but <laughs> let us now go back to making it open. Um, she has a question. Yes, so, you know, we've been going on back and forth, but we need to talk about the key thing right now, the curriculum. 
Let's talk about the curriculum, present curriculum we have, and what exactly is wrong with our curriculum within the school system, what we can do to improve it, or what we need, whether we still need certain things within the curriculum, or we need to like face certain things out, and then, you know, import new ones. Okay, so fortunately for the curriculum, uh, I think I have some, a little bit more information mm. on that. Mm. Um, firstly, our curriculum is outdated. Mm. I mean, it's outdated. That is one. I mean, in terms of the content itself, it's outdated. Mm. Secondly, is of course, outdated means it's re less relevant to the modern day, right? Mm. And then also the method, which is the rural learning approach I talked about. So it makes it not, um, not recommended for our society right now. Mm. So I, I actually reached out to the people at NERDC, that is the Nigerian Education Research Development um, Commission. And these are the people, this is the institute we, um, that is in charge of our curriculum reviews and mm. development. So the last time they did any modification was 15 years ago. Wow. wow. Yes, yeah, so I reached out to them and I, I saw, because of course I looked at the budget. The, the budget for this year, no, 100 million for review. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I used that case study and said, you people have this money. How do you plan to do it? Do you want to use it or do you want to embezzle it? Mm -hmm. So they now said, um, that this um, September, mm. that they are going to roll out a new curriculum. Yeah. So I asked again, I asked again, they still, because at some point, even the Minister of Education has to mandate them to do that. Mm. But the truth of the matter is that we're almost at the end of August, yeah. and I haven't heard anything. And of course, if you want to roll out a curriculum, I believe that there's a point for public review. Mm. And we've not seen that. So I can't really say if that it's going to be out, but from the last response they gave me last week mm. when I asked again, they said it to still be available. So based on that, this is definitely the much I can say on that. But it's very critical that we have to change that curriculum. Because I was telling them that these private schools mm. spend hundreds of millions every year in terms yes. of curriculum because almost every single private school has a new way of different way they approach their things. Mm. And they invest money in this curriculum review because they have their own internal curriculum mm. aside from the national one, yeah. right? Mm. So you need to partner with these people. When I, anytime I'm in Cambridge, I, I go to Cambridge like two or three times every year and we go on different trainings. And I see a lot of them. I know how much they spend trying to get more knowledge. Yeah. If you can't partner with them and you want to do it on your own, I think you may still never get it right. Mm. Wow. So um, since we're discussing curriculum, I have a question or yes. question or comment. So you did something last yeah. year, people from your village. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, um, students from your village scored, they, a lot of them, 70% failed, failed yeah. their jam. Yeah. And you took responsibility, which yeah. is very important because yeah. when you mentioned we are the leaders, yeah. There are some, there's somebody watching right now. There are many school owners, school CEOs, and you know that in your hometown, people are failing exams, and you did something. I want you to tell us what you did, because if 70% failed exams in 2023, and in 2024, everybody got over 200. Mm -hmm. okay, so, something, you, what you did worked. They got over 200. You said even um, about uh, many scored over 250, a few scored over 300. In the same environment where... Just a year before, 70% failed. What did you do that brought that massive you, result what, what in the... What was the cost? Mm -hmm. what what, yes. So the first of all, I mean, this was a combined effort. Okay. Uh, which, fortunately, I played a very key role in that. Mm. So the truth of the matter is that what we did was very different. You know, I told my team then, early then, when we identified the gap, because it was actually above 70%. I told them, say, listen, we can't do the same thing and expect a different result. Mm. So there's something we are going to do. We are going to create like a mock school. Mm. So we are going to give them intensive um, drilling mm -hmm. Monday through Saturday. We started from morning and evening. So we have to do it, bring everybody. We had like 268 at the end. So we started putting them on morning and evening. So they started studying. But then I told them, let's not stop there. We're first of all going to assess the, the student every month. So assessing the student every month, let's even know their gaps. That was where I was talking about gaps. So mm. this is what we call gap analysis. Mm. It's one tool that our software has. So we have to deploy that. So when we are looking at your maths, we want to see that your gap is in geometry, mm. not in algebra. Mm. So if we are seeing geometry, so you know what, let's focus in the next period, uh, let's focus on closing that geometry gap. Mm -hmm. So we notice that between this month and next month, we notice that there's significant improvement, wow. right? And we are looking at the flow. So in English, synonyms, antonyms, uh, lexis and structure, we are looking at how you are closing those gaps, right? Mm. So where we are sometimes we have to go back. Another thing we started doing was, as we are giving the students assessments, we are also giving the teachers assessments. Wow. So we realized that, you know, when you cut, just like when you say doctor, mm. 
doctor sounds like everybody is excellent. There are low class doctors, there are top class doctors. Mm -hmm. So in teaching, there are low class teachers. So we had to fire like four teachers. Mm -hmm. And when we fired them, like for one of the subjects we did was chemistry that I, mm -hmm. I we noticed significant improvement in the chemistry. So the, the teacher, you scored 17. Mm. As a teacher? Yes. In an exam that even the student that you are teaching are scoring higher than you. Oh my wow. God. So, and you know, oh. wow. no, the point is that we have, fortunately, we have a system. Mm -hmm. So there were, there were a lot of intentionality in I, that. I need approach. to take this call, but what you just did, what you just wow. said was a major, wow. a major problem. Um, Ibrahim has called in from K2. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my is your guest here. Also. All right, thank like, you. Like, what he's saying right now is all about, it's still all about reading. We still need to practicalize what we are saying or what we are studying in the school. Now, nah, because I went to public, my children went to private now. I'm not seeing the same thing, which is practical. When a teacher is teaching, like Scalenti now, we need to have it in school, not to tell the teacher of nowadays to go and bring it. Now, you're talking about mathematics. Where are they feeling? There's nothing practicalized in it. In my house, there are a lot of books, there's nothing like physical. In the office, you are reading books, you do this. For a little while, you go out and do work. Take a walk, then come back. That is practical. We need something practical in the public school, not only all this year tech. Uh, we have one in Yaba, we have one in the engineering lag there. Not only just basic secondary and primary, the popular one. In the class, it is the government, whether it's the teacher or whatever. We provide this in the classroom, not the students to go and provide a flu for it, and that's stress for the body for them. Show them what you are saying. You will see that they will not fail again. Show them what you are saying. Practicalize it. This is why bring out the one. How the one stand, the figure of one. How does it minus? How does it remove? Bring out curves, not only the primary or the secondary or the J or the S. That's what I'm saying, right? Everywhere, all class must practicalize what they are saying. We come out and speak English too much in this country. Focus. Nothing to shop like doctor, you don't know the I'm not seeing skeleton from your day one. In later, does not even I've never even visit or seen what they call cell. Cell. So thank you. Give you back to public schools because the majority of Nigerian students are still seeking education from public school and the average Nigerian cannot even afford a good private, private school. So the interventions that we need to cause real change in Nigeria has to take place within the public school. And I'd like you to get practical. I, he, he was very angry. He went to public school and he was saying, how will they be telling the students to bring the skeleton? <laughs> As this thing should be in the school. Let them be able to touch, touch and, and yeah, feel the things themselves. So please, I would like, to, um, I'd like you to help us con break down a few of the things that you feel the government can do. Cheap wins that they can do to change the um, results we are getting, especially at the primary school level within Nigeria. Yes, so like I said, if um, you can't use the same old way and expect a different result, mm -hmm. modern schools are no, I mean, some of the schools that we are looking forward to, like the US and the UK, they are not trying to put children under pressure to be the first <laughs> or to try to judge them by who got highest and why. No, they are more interested in because they believe that every child is unique mm. and their learning method is unique. Mm -hmm. So they try to see, follow the child as in their own pace. So if we want to get the kind of results they have, then we have to probably look at what they are doing. The truth of the matter is that before we go, to, I mean, when you see sometimes, uh, I just believe that you understand it better, you know, when you see Nigerians expressing themselves angrily, it's also a deficiency in education. Mm. Because you know why? If you, if you understand how communication and criticism work, no matter how people communicate, these are part of the things they teach. You can see a normal British child, you're you expressing yourself, they are listening. I'm so sorry, this is it. I'm so sorry, this is part of education. Mm. Just like if you want to be like a hostess in an airplane, they will teach you how to how be able to, to manage. Yeah. So it's important, it's part of, core part of education. So now, what I'm saying is, if the, government, if the governments are well-educated and we're now telling them, okay, we need that attention. Because from that attention, they start, okay, you know what, we have like a very qualified team, not a political team, mm -hmm. that understands the things to do. And then the things are being put in place. Trust me, you'll start seeing those changes. 
But if it's still political, unfortunately, mm. you will never see anything. So now I'm beginning yeah. to wonder, um, in the sense of partnerships, what partnerships, for instance, do you think we can start to implement between public, uh, public private stakeholders to actually meet, how, meet with government on, on this table to ensure that we can start to you know, fast track some of these things? If we, or we know that government cannot do it alone. So for brands such as yourself, how do you think that brands like you can partner with government to actually start to you know, change the systems, for instance, in our public educational sectors? How can we help? Um, the truth of the matter is, unfortunately, we have one of the most advanced technology that basically helps transform education across different places. So in terms of the technology part, we have what it takes. Unfortunately, we've already developed quite a number of um, relationships locally and internationally, mm. but that still doesn't solve it. We have a lot of conversations on partnerships on partnership. The point is that those minds, mm. I mean, I don't want to be discussing partnership with you. Why in your head you are calculating, Fantastic. not even how much money you will come make. to you at the yes. end of the day. So, and when mm. you have those kind of conversations, you know, it's very discouraging mm. and it's very easy to detect. You get it. So it's mm. not like, so when you have the heart, a lot of things will fix. So the point is, who is appointing? Can you actually appoint credible people? Oh, is it yeah, not the same states where yeah. people are removed because they are not politicians and, and they are technocrats? Situation. Exactly. People were removed. People who delivered were removed because they were not politicians. And exactly. then we bring in politicians into the place and they were not hearing anything again. So because I've I had get a lot you. Of, I have had a number of mm. government people that I've had conversations with. Guess what? I stopped engaging them because mm. I just realized that I'm talking A, these people are in F. They are not, and I've been trying to talk to you. So the point is that I'm not condemning them because mm. like I said, I will keep talking. But there's no point trying to waste so much energy when I know that your intent is completely Honestly. different. Honestly. All right, let so me take this call. I'll come to you, Nima, after this call. Um, welcome to the show. Good morning. Kola. Hello. Matthew, I'm sorry, yeah, from yeah. Bariga. Uh, good morning. I'm the first caller on your program. Yay. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to the show. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. And you are having a very interesting topic this morning, and I'd like to contribute as a secondary speaker. Okay, so I teach in a private school, and um, I want to say that many of the problems that we have in this, our educational sector is from the secondary school. Mm. Actually, over the years, when I mean over the years, mass promotion of students in private schools. Um, parents teaching and abating examination practices. Then teachers also and abating examination practices. I tell you, I've seen it over and over that students that are not qualified to be promoted to the next class are always being promoted, and it saddens my heart as a teacher. But you know, when we have meetings, staff meetings, we talk about not being the owner of the schools and all that, there's nothing you can do. And we see, for example, a um, few years ago, about two years ago or three years ago, we had mass failure of our students, and um, many of them had written GC in the past, so my school doesn't allow my practice. So when they wrote to work, many of them did not do well. So when they came for the uh, VS, only to say that many students that did not do well, they are already in their institution. So what we are saying is that secondary schools, private schools especially, are accomplished in the kind of graduate that we produce. Many of them don't know anything. And yes, they are graduating from secondary school and going to private universities. Many of the private universities admit those students that are not even fit to be in SS1. Mm. So many of the problems we are having are from what? From the secondary school, especially the private secondary school. Many of Thank you so much, Mr. Matthew. I think Mr. Matthew probably, probably teaches in the government mm. um, secondary school, school yeah. and he's well, seeing that problem. I'll from what Mr. Matthew said, but I wanted to Well, I think it's below income secondary school. Yeah. That's the word we should... No, even for... No, even the, I mean, one. yeah, even yeah. in terms of that, yeah. Yeah, so I was going to ask earlier, you know, because it can be discouraging when you have to partner government with anything. Yeah. You know, because you're dealing with politicians and their interests, yeah. you know, part-time. But we, you did something that we talked about, um, about, you know, improving your community and the way education is there. How far do you think this can go? And how encouraging do you see individual, uh, maybe corporate entities or, you know, individuals who have the same interests? For instance, even the, the, what do they call it, Igwe of your community. How far do you think their partnerships can take this instead of dealing with the... Mm -hmm. So what happened here, which I've, I, I mean, I expected it to happen. What happened right now is that 
um, the, uh, the, all my senatorial district are adopting the model now. Mm -hmm. okay. So they down the, so the government, the governor also, and the senator in charge, they are they have now fully taken over. Mm -hmm. So they have adopted it. So I mean, I expected that. So I mean, there are some other people across different spread places mm -hmm. that so are now trying to do something within. So what Nigeria normally needs is a first mover, mm -hmm. right? If you want to come to the toll gate, follow the wrong way. People will follow you. Mm -hmm. So the point is, who will move first? Mm -hmm. right? So um, I think we also need to start developing that first mover mindset, mm -hmm. knowing that if we wait to complain, we'll complete the complain complain forever. Then, sorry, the caller mentioned, you know, passing kids who have failed. And so would, uh, BC usually says that examination is not the true test of anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, um, would you say that Sometimes it is required to pass students who are failed. This is because, case in question, I saw three teachers discussing with a language teacher, saying you're teaching a strange language to all the students in class and you're failing them in primary two for wrong spelling. Now, if you look at what the kids wrote, they already knew what she was asking, but they couldn't spell in that language. So in failing those kids, is she doing the right thing? Or what would you adv adv advise her to be the yardstick for testing the... Knowledge of like the my children, children the only um, the weakest mark they got when they were leaving secondary primary school was in Yoruba, and that was because they didn't they couldn't read the question, and they left them at premises that you should be able to read. So this one could even question. read the question, yeah. but when they want they, to write well, they will numbers, they said orally oh, because they wrote it, it in different as ways, right? a different yeah, way. Yeah. So they are writing with their phonics that they yeah, <laughs> and the teacher is marking them for wrongly spelling Yoruba words. Uh, so how would you rate that? So firstly, any child that fails anything, the person you have to fail the person. It's not that it's, that one by deal is failing, failing in spelling. Failing in spelling, failing, spelling that you failed because of your course. Mm. It doesn't mean the person didn't fail. As a teacher, for the child to fail, that means you actually mm -hmm. contributed, but still failed the child. Then go back and oh, okay. do things. Mm -hmm. But that is one. Secondly, there's something that uh, we also need to understand. That's why when I started here, I talked about basic education. Mm -hmm. In the UK, only 53% of their entire population went to school outside of the secondary education. Mm -hmm. So when you hear about graduates, only 53%. In the US, only 50%. Mm -hmm. So the most critical part of education is that basic, basic education. Mm -hmm. That's what a society, that's why it's mandatory and it's free. In Nigeria, they will tell you it's free and it's actually free mm -hmm. because it's mandatory. It's a societal critical need. Mm -hmm. So when you don't pay attention to it, every other thing you see, I'm a first principled person. Mm -hmm. I understand that a Newton's third law of motion will tell you that action mm -hmm. and reaction are equal and opposite. Mm -hmm. If you forget that principle, you can never fly a rocket. Mm -hmm. So why did the committee tell me that when you flew the rocket, you started flying on the air? No, you missed that <laughs> first principle. Foundation. So I think we should focus more on that foundation. Even the Bible tells you, clean inside the cup, and then the outside will be clean. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how I think. So let's go back, fix that basic, because what a child should know, a child should actually know it. And when children know this thing, by the time they are coming up, these things become easy, mm. right? Then all these other miracle centers and all these things, <laughs> they, naturally they'll start fitting their way. But, but, but so this brings me to what I want to say in terms yeah. of like, you, uh, you're talking about the importance of um, early education. Yeah. Why are these the kids on the streets when well, we have mm. public schools? Because mm. I don't understand why, even for, for a place like even Lagos State, I get so angry when I see all these kids outside because uh, by now I expect that at least Lagos State, there shouldn't be any so child please on leave the Lagos street. Alone, uh, you Lagos Lagos understand? So crying. even in the whole, no, but as in, even, even like police officials, anybody that sees any child on the street should, should you, come in. You, no, 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 you understand? No, because it's, even the Lagos is still a leadership problem. You know mm -hmm. why? If you remember uh, Latif Jakande, mm -hmm. he's one leader in Lagos that yes. is the best Everything. thing in education. Yes. Most of the people today, actually, you see them benefited from him, right? Mm -hmm. Education was interesting, education was fun. Yes. If you made education interesting, fun, and lovely, mm -hmm. even children in the streets, you would prefer to be in school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you, like I said, you can't ignore the critical things. And so in terms of every other leader have come after uh, mm. Latif Jakande, mm. they have constantly failed in education. Mm. So you understand? So they yes. should go back. What has worked? Because there's no point reinventing the wheel. Yes. What did he do right? Yes. Can, can we copy something from him? Let's fix it. You understand? I think mm. the, doing that thing is better than buying all the smart boards. That's true. You understand? <laughs> Why majority of your children are in the street begging? That's true. What's yes. the point? It's not legal. Down down this, news see, this matter, eh? I have discussed it with the governor, deputy governor, the challenge with and the former commissioner for education, education. was an education. Um, Mr. Um, Davis, yes, she's this was her passion, and there was a lot of work that went into it. Um, sadly, we're not seeing as much continuity. I'm, I'm not seeing as much continuity as I'd love to see, mm -hmm. but the issues were beyond um, 
getting people off the street was beyond the uh, so government the parents in because issue. the street children and most of them are not Lagosians. Most of them they bring them in and it is a commercial activity. They don't want their children in school because if their children are in school, they cannot make money. Those children make money from knocking on the windows of people on, uh, that are driving, and that's the way the, you see the parents will sit down, and the ch parents keep churning out babies. And yet they have them on the streets. And to be honest, even because so, it is a business thing. If you take them off the street, they will take the children back because they will not have food to eat but if they are not on that street. So I, I understand, like and we blame Lagos all the time. And yet they keep. If you see them, they are coming in with, with on, on, but they should arrest in large they numbers. Or do you anything. know what a government is? You're supposed to clear yeah, them no, from no, the no, streets. Do, do we understand what a uh -huh. government what is? What government is working in? They should clear. They should not even the way they are moving. They should not be on. They should not beg. No sitting. I feel like there's also a huge mental mindset shift. How many young people on, on their own, of their free will and volition, actually understand the importance? I want to go through the education route to mm. success. Mm. So do you think that that mindset problem that exists, we cannot deny it, is something that we should... Because we have young people, young boys, who actually, if they have the opportunity to go to school, they want to go and do Yahoo mm. and make quick Drive money. Because, yes, because they're saying to See, you, there, the money that I make, I want it in. So, I will so have just will two more minutes okay. to wrap up the there's show. I would like you to... There's something I'll need to tell you. Mm. Eh? Environment, environment is basically what shapes people. Mm -hmm. there's, not, there's nothing like a bad child. There's nothing like a good child. Mm. Take that notorious child to the UK. Mm. Just let the person get into Hitro. Or even see it. Let's go to American embassy. Bring that notorious child. Just Nigeria here will not left. Within that period that the person is waiting for that interview, you will see the best form of behavior. Mm. Don't try, don't create an environment that uh, forms bad behavior. So the most important thing is this: government have all the power to make any change. Government have no single excuse. Mm. So what they need to do is let them engage other people, other governments, mm. and see what they did differently. That is where you know, um, partnership and innovation happens. What did what did they do in China? What did they do in Thailand? What did they do in some of these places that have gone through what you are going through now and have advanced? What did they do in the U.S.? that have gone through what you're going through like 50 years ago. Take ideas from there, implement it, it will work. Mm -hmm. We are still on this earth. Those ideas will always work. Mm. So excuses are not allowed. They should basically get the ideas. I take, my, I, I like take my excuse back. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I, I take my excuse back. Thank, Thank you so, so, so much. My God, you have shared a whole lot. And I, I really am um, grateful for the collaboration you made last year that has brought results this year. I'm praying that without your effort, it will still continue. And I would also, when you were saying it, it just occurred to me that if every successful private school adopts a public school, we probably will see improvements in mm. our educational sector. So while we're waiting for the government and the politicians pay to apart. pay attention, let a public school a private school adopts a public school. It might help to boost the educational um, opportunities within that place. We wish you all the best in all of this. We'll continue our conversation after we finish the show.